Okay everybody, this is the first video that you will have available to you for Bio 141. Um, you'll have several of these throughout the semester. I try to take some videos of some of our models that we use in class, point out the structures to you that you need to know on them, and um, just give you another way to look at and study this material when you're not here on campus. Remember, you need to be in lab. This is not a substitution, but just um, another study aid for you. So we're going to talk about the cell first. <clears throat> With the cell, you should be able to name all the organelles and know what their function is <clears throat> on the several different models that we have. So this is the large cell model that we have here. And you can see the large nucleus of the cell, which remembers where the cell is basically controlled. The nucleus is going to provide all of the genetic material that's going to make all of these other structures in the cell. So it's sort of like the cell brain. It's in control of the cell. That's the blue part. Around the nucleus, you have a double-layered nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope that's going to protect the DNA contents on the inside. And these little polka dots on the nucleus are the nuclear pores. And you can see here it's going through both layers of the nuclear envelope. And this is how the RNA leaves the nucleus to get into the cytoplasm, which is all this part of the cell outside of the nucleus. So nucleus, nuclear envelope, nuclear pores, cytoplasm, which is all of this yellow part with all of these organelles. And then the outer part of the cell, right around here, would be the cell membrane. And that's going to be sort of like the skin of the cell. It's going to protect the entire cell contents. If we look inside the nucleus, we see these little spheres, little gray spheres. They look kind of like the moon. This one's been broken a little bit. Those are your nucleolus, or nucleoli, since there's more than one. The nucleolus is responsible for, or not necessarily responsible for, but is basically the location of your, um, where your ribosomes are being assembled. So these are for ribosome assembly. And this orange fuzzy stuff inside the nucleus is actually the DNA in the form of chromatin. So this red hair in here is chromatin, which is DNA that's been stretched out into long stringy strands so that it can be undergoing duplication. That's pretty much it for the nucleus and what's inside of it. Now we'll take a look at the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the yellow stuff, the fluid of the cell, which is called the cytosol all by itself, and all the organelles inside of it. So the cytosol, or fluid, plus the organelles together make up the cytoplasm, which is everything except the nucleus that's in a cell. <clears throat> in the cytoplasm, we have lots of different organelles. These orange guys here are your mitochondria. You can see they've cut some of them so you can see the folded membranes on the inside. In right here. So all of these are mitochondria. All of these little bean-shaped structures. Mitochondria are responsible for producing ATP, which is the energy molecule that all cells use to do work, adenosine triphosphate. So mitochondria make ATP. These little red dots here, little teeny tiny red dots inside the cytosol are polysomes or ribosomes. These ribosomes are responsible for making proteins. This blue structure here, these tubules inside the cell, are all called endoplasmic reticulum altogether. Endoplasmic reticulum. Now, endoplasmic reticulum make things. There's two types of endoplasmic reticulum. This endoplasmic reticulum right here has little red dots on it, very similar to what you see here. These are ribosomes that are on the outside of the endoplasmic reticulum. That endoplasmic reticulum is called rough endoplasmic reticulum, and you can see some more of it here. This endoplasmic reticulum, on the other hand, does not have red dots on its surface. And this endoplasmic reticulum is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And you can see that all along the cell. 
So if it's <coughs> endoplasmic reticulum with ribosomes, like this right here, then it's rough endoplasmic reticulum. If it's endoplasmic reticulum without ribosomes, it's smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum makes uh, proteins that are going to be released from the cell, secreted proteins. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum makes lipid type substances, steroids, hormones, those types of things in the smooth ER or endoplasmic reticulum. <coughs> Now another structure associated with endoplasmic reticulums is this red structure right here which is called the Golgi apparatus. Substances are made in the endoplasmic reticulum and then sent to the Golgi apparatus through little bubbles in the cell called vesicles. So the endoplasmic reticulum will make something, a vesicle will pinch off and it will travel up to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is going to modify <coughs> things and package stuff for transport outside of the cell. So it's kind of like a packaging plant. Once it leaves the Golgi, it will go to the outside of the cell. <coughs> and these little red bubbles are actually vesicles that are coming off of the Golgi and going towards the plasma membrane. So these little red things are vesicles. Vesicles are just little bubbles flu uh, that are filled with something from uh, that's located inside the cell that's either coming into the cell or leaving the cell. We have a couple more things in this cell. One of those is the lysosome, which in, on this cell is this purple bubble. Lysosomes are vesicles that contain digestive enzymes that will basically eat any kind of debris that's inside of the cell. Some cells can um, swallow things like bacteria and the lysosomes will fuse with those bacteria and digest them using their enzymes that are inside. Also any components of the cell that start to die the lysosomes will digest. So you can see lots of lysosomes. These red, yellow ones are peroxisomes. Peroxisomes serve a very similar function to lysosomes. These right here, these things that look like Twizzlers in this cell, are your centrioles. Each cell has one set of centrioles, which are two bunches of microtubules that are perpendicular to each other. These are the centrioles. And the centrioles are responsible for making some of your cytoskeletal elements like spindle fibers and allowing your cells to divide. So these are centrioles. Now we'll just take a look at these structures on a different model. Basically the same model, just a little bit smaller. Nucleus with a nuclear envelope. Nuclear pores are the holes. Nucleolus inside. Chromatin. Cytosol. Cytoplasm. Remember the cytosol is the yellow part on these cells. The cytoplasm includes everything. Plasma membrane around the outside of the cell. Mitochondria are the orange ones here, here, here. These are polysomes or ribosomes, just long strings of ribosomes. Rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth. Golgi apparatus, centrioles. There are no vesicles or lysosomes or peroxisomes on this cell. <coughs> okay, here's another type of cell. This is the gray cell that we have. Looks, everything looks a little bit different on here. Plasma membrane outside. Cytosol on this one is gray. Cytoplasm, of course, is everything, including the organelles. Here's your nucleus. These purple lines are representing the chromatin. Here's your nuclear pores. Nucleolus. Looks like a moon. These are your mitochondria in pink. Also mitochondria here. These are cut, so you can see the membranes on the inside. This little cabbage is the Golgi apparatus, and so is this right here. This one's cut in a sagittal section, so you can actually see the stacks 
A Golgi is basically pancakes stacked on top of each other. They're just uh, tubes, stacked tubes. <clears throat> These yellow structures in this one are the lysosomes. These are your vesicles. These gray bubbles here. <clears throat> this is a centriole. These together would make up one centriole. Remember, they're always a matched pair perpendicular to each other, which is why you see one in cross-section and one in a longitudinal section because of the way they're cut. And all of these tubes here are going to be endoplasmic reticulum. If you look at this cell really closely in lab, you'll see that there are some little pockmark dots in the gray substance, and those are your ribosomes. But you can't really tell rough endoplasmic reticulum from smooth on this one, so all of this would just be endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, that's it for the cell. I'm going to show you um, some cellular mitosis next.